We hope to see you at another American Airlines flight. Once again, thank you and have a wonderful rest of your day and safe travels, whatever your final destination may be. Thank you. It was a long 12-hour flight from Los Angeles, but I arrived and landed safely in Buenos Aires a few days before the Christmas holidays. For the early morning hotel check-in in the neighborhood of Puerto Madero, the rooms were not ready. In the lobby, Visible signs of the holiday season were on display. It would be a few hours wait, but I had a scheduled and prearranged afternoon tour to go around the scenic spots of Buenos Aires. This would kill the rest of my time before my cruise embarkation the next day. That's why they were gladly surprised. Buenos Aires is the capital and largest city of Argentina, a multicultural city and home to multiple ethnic and religious groups. It is sometimes referred to as the Paris of South America with its strongly influenced European culture. Here at this area we are going to see a lot of colorful houses. It's a tradition of some of the immigrants that were living here, they, they couldn't afford to build a full house, they were building of the cheapest materials that they could find, metal and wood, and make their life a little bit joyer. They wanted to paint it in colors, but they didn't, didn't have money to buy the painting. So they were asking to the port, wars, port workers to give them the leftovers of the paintings. Arriving at the La Boca neighborhood, we did a walk on our own along the street of Caminito, a place with cultural significance and brightly painted and colorful building structures. Local artists sell their work in the area, but most visitors merely browsed and admired their creativity. This place has a lot of shops and restaurants set up for tourists, and a great area to visit and wander around for pictures in this unique corner of Buenos Aires. May Square is the place where the city was founded for the second time by Juan de Garay in 1580. Our next stop was the main square or Plaza de Mayo in the neighborhood of Montserrat, which is surrounded by several significant points of interest including the Casa Rosada, the executive mansion and office of the President of Argentina, the Buenos Aires City Hall, the Metropolitan Cathedral, the Bank of the Argentine Nation's headquarters, and the May Pyramid Monument, where members of the Mothers of Plaza de Mayo were collecting their banners, symbolizing the memory of the kidnapping and disappearance of their children during the military regime in the 1970s and 1980s. From the center of the main square, we walk across the street to explore the Metropolitan Cathedral of Buenos Aires. The interior has a mixture of architectural styles. It is decorated with altar pieces, and the walls and ceilings are decorated with frescoes depicting biblical scenes, while the floor of the cathedral was covered with Venetian-style mosaics. And a most worth visiting in the cathedral is the tomb of General José de San Martín the founding father of Argentina and the prime leader of the southern and central parts of South America's successful struggle for independence from the Spanish Empire. The black sarcophagus is guarded by three life-size female figures that represent Argentina, Chile and Peru, three of the regions freed by the general. So today, today the tour will be finishing around this area, in the area of uh, here in the cemetery. So that cemetery became very unique in the world when there are no burials, only crypts and mausoleums. 
and each family of course wanted to show how rich and influent and powerful that family was so they started to hire European architects European sculptures to create their tombs this way ended up this cemetery as, as a very as I said unique cemetery in the world where we have only crypts and only mausoleums one of the most beautiful cemeteries in the world is the Recoleta Cemetery. This 14-acre first public burial ground in Buenos Aires opened in 1822 and now contains over 4,600 vaults, mausoleums, and monuments. Hundreds of important Argentinians, prestigious and prominent personalities and their families, and many more who have contributed to what Argentina is today are buried here. The cemetery's most famous resident is Eva Maria Duarte de Perón, a former First Lady of Argentina. Her body was buried in the Duarte family tomb. Puerto Madero is one of Buenos Aires' most modern neighborhoods. I took my time to stroll around the dock to see and appreciate the interesting landmarks in the area. This one is a unique architecture of women's bridge, a pedestrian bridge honoring important women from the Argentine history. It's a great setting for photography with its design evoking a couple dancing and in a traditional tango pose, if you can imagine it. The bridge has also become popular for lovers to leave their love locks by this landmark and throw away the key to symbolize their unbreakable love. It's a growing practice and tourist tradition in many other major landmarks around the world. Just next to the women's bridge is the Fregado Presidente Sarmiento, a former Argentine Navy training ship that is maintained in its late 19th century appearance and is now a museum. Going around the dock, some walls on one side were painted with graffiti. It's the idea of bringing art to the people in the outdoor and becoming magnets for background settings and photo shoots. And so this was a good day of photo shoots and an interesting day of exploration in the neighborhoods of Buenos Aires. The next morning, it was time to head for the cruise terminal to embark on my next adventure and the sail away to South America and Antarctica. It was the end of year escape to hang out and spend the holidays with unfamiliar faces and see what else is out there to explore. The holiday merriment was everywhere when I embarked, and the sail away moment was filled with anticipations and an indescribable feeling of celebration while heading out to a seemingly middle of nowhere to welcome the upcoming new year in a few days. 